mobile home park, beauty spas, offices, and now a supermarket. The grim reality of life in America in 2021. Few, if any, places are safe from gun violence. On this day, it was a Kroger near Memphis, Tennessee. A shooter sent employees and customers running into freezers and cowering behind shelves, hiding in the hopes of saving their lives. Witnesses at the scene say the gunman kept on shooting and shooting and shooting. At least 12 people were shot and at least one person has died. The shooter also then apparently took his own life. Now, anxious family and friends await word about their loved ones. Tonight, the investigation into what happened. Authorities say the gunman's car remains in the parking lot and officials are investigating the incident as possible workplace violence. ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas leads us off. Tonight, shoppers and employees running for their lives at this Tennessee supermarket as shots ring out. They have four to six victims at this time. Local police, SWAT teams, and federal agents swarming the scene. A Kroger supermarket about 30 miles east of Memphis. There's over 200 police cars out here. Authorities say the gunman opened fire around 1.30 this afternoon, killing at least one person and wounding at least a dozen more. He kept on shooting, shooting, shooting. He shot one of my coworkers in the head. As bad as this scene is, and it's, hor it's horrific, I've been involved in this for 34 years, and I've never seen anything like it. Officers canvassing the building, searching for survivors. We found people hiding in freezers and in locked offices, and, uh, you know, they were doing what they had been trained to do, run, hide, fight. One worker fleeing to the roof for safety. Police say they discovered the shooter dead of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot. The suspect's vehicle located in the store parking lot. We are waiting on some additional equipment to get here to be able to uh, safely check that vehicle. Supermarkets again on the list of soft targets attacked by lone gunmen after that horrific shooting at a Colorado supermarket earlier this year and the nation reeling from a stunning surge in mass shootings. I want to bring back in our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, who, who joins us once again. And Pierre, just kind of give us the, the standing op standard operating uh, procedure here as far as uh, they were saying that twice the police chief said that they want to make sure no one else is involved in this. But it's their belief at this point that there was just one lone shooter, correct, and, and that he is now deceased. Well, what you're seeing, Lindsay, is the uh, abundance of caution scenario where they think they have a pretty good handle on what took place. Uh, they want to make sure that this person didn't give any information to someone that this was a going to happen uh, where someone should have maybe notified law enforcement. Uh, our sources are saying that they're looking at this as a potential workplace violence uh, incident. Uh, uh, more on that will be coming later, uh, we're told. Uh, but it's in the early stages of the investigation. But th the key thing here, Lindsay, is that clearly law enforcement got there pretty quickly. But as you can see, the suspect had already shot in excess of 10 people, um, but they were able to uh, apparently get the situation under control. And uh, now they have to go through the process of, you know, commandeering, you know, looking through the suspect's vehicle, there's property associated with this person, uh, the suspect, and getting any kind of paperwork, computers, anything that would give them a sense of the specific motive. Um, that is the, the key now, but again, I think everyone is breathing a sigh of relief that even though this was a tragic, scary incident so far, thankfully only one person has died. There are a lot of people in the hospital, and I think the community, while shocked, is breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief that it, it wasn't much worse. Right. It could have been certainly a, a lot worse. And as we talked about at the beginning of the show, you know, we've just been seeing this spike, this surge in these mass shootings across the country. You certainly have been in the front lines of covering all of that. Uh, the officials that you're talking to, do they speculate as far as why, in particular, 2021 seems to be this banner year? Well, I've talked to so many law enforcement officials about this, Lindsay, and uh, they are talking about the fact that the availability of guns combined with the fact that there are uh, just a lot of criminal activity. Uh, some uh, police chiefs are saying that some of the people that were released uh, early in connection with the pandemic are now back on the street uh, doing things that the way they used to do them, i.e. back into criminal activity. Uh, they're looking very closely at repeat offenders. Uh, 
Uh, some police chiefs are complaining about the fact that judges are not being as aggressive or, t or they're too lenient on people caught possessing uh, firearms illegally. Uh, but I can say this in general. If you look at the numbers across the board, there's just a hell of a lot of shooting going on. And it's not just urban settings, it's settings of domestic violence involving all kinds of people of different races and socioeconomic backgrounds. The country is just in the midst of an incredibly violent moment with just a tremendous amount of firepower out there. We are now joined by an eyewitness, Tawana French, who was outside of the Kroger supermarket during the shooting. Tawana, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we're so glad that you are safe. Give us a sense of what was happening. You, were you heading into the Kroger? Had you already been in there? And what did you see? What did you hear? Actually, I was heading into the Kroger. Um, I was at the door to enter the store, and... I got rushed, uh, a family, seemed like a family, a lady and about four children, and she's pushing them out of the door, dragging one behind her, falling on the ground, and telling them to just run, run, run. A uh, man coming out of the store at the same time as her, jumping over her, and a split second later, I hear gunfire. Um, and, and so what I, do you do in that moment? On the door. Oh, in that moment, I did just what the lady said. I ran, ran, ran. Uh, before I could get to my car, which was not very far at all, I heard even more gunfire. Uh, rapid succession, just pow, 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 pow. I just wanted to get to a safe place. I didn't know if the gunman was in the store or outside of the store. Bless you. And I just wanted to be in a safe place. And what was going through your mind? I know that obviously you were looking for safety. Were you, how fearful were you? Did you have any idea? Were people suggesting that, you know, there's a shooter inside Kroger? What, what was the scene like? Well, um, this happened very, very quickly. Um, probably a total of less, I know less than two minutes, maybe no more than a minute. Um, from the time that I was at the door and the and the lady and her family ran out uh, to the time I got to my car uh, because I was only about six cars away from the front of the store, from the entry. Uh, before I got to my car, I could now see people running out of the other entry. Um, I heard one lady yell, I think, I think he's been hit. I think someone's been hit. Uh, but I start seeing people running and getting in cars and speeding out of the out of the parking lot as quickly as they could. Uh, as I was leaving, I started seeing police cars come in. And so it was just a matter of minutes be between the time that you heard those first shots fired to the, the police arrival on the scene. That's correct. And you left as well. So you didn't sit in around in, in your car in the parking lot. You got in your car and immediately left. That is correct. And we've also heard reports that there was an employee on the roof. Uh, we, that was confirmed as well by the police chief. Did you see that person on the roof? I did not see that person on the roof. Um, at that point, I was headed away from Kroger. Um, when I heard the shots, I was you know, at the entry into the store. So uh, I was really, actually uh, in the first, it, that store has two entrances. You come into the first door and then you enter the store into the second door. I was at the second door to enter into the store. And that's when the people started running out. So I didn't see anything on the outside and I um headed towards my car and kept going once I got to my car. My car fortunately was not headed uh, in the direction of the store, so everything at that point was behind me. Well, Ms. Tawana French, uh, again, we're so glad that you're safe. Appreciate your account and your time uh, spending it with us uh, to just give us a sense of, of what that moment of, we imagine, just sheer fear must have been like. Really appreciate you tonight. Thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.